Examining the source coupled pair that we were just looking at in the last set of slides, we're going to start by assuming that the transistors and the resistances uh, M1, M2, and RD1 and RD2 are equivalent. Uh, if this is the case, then we know that the currents through those transistors, IM1 and IM2, have to be equal, and they should just split the difference of the tail current source, IS. Okay, so let's examine a couple of different cases here. If the resistance RS is equal to infinity, then what happens is we know VO1 is equal to VO2, so our output differential voltage is equal to zero. So if we say that VCM increases, then there's nothing to stop the voltage at the source node, Vs, from increasing by an equivalent amount. If this happens, the output voltage doesn't change. In other words, we have a constant bias point. for the transistors. Okay, now let's look at the case where RS is not equal to infinity, so uh, it's something lower than infinity. What happens here, well we still expect that because of the symmetry of the circuit, IM1 is still equal to IM2. Okay, and if we increase VCM, then we know that Vs is also going to increase. But now Vs is increasing and there's a finite resistance, so that means that more current's going to flow through the circuit. So we can say that the source current Is prime is equal to Is plus the change in the source voltage. We'll just call this delta Vs divided by Rs. So what we can see here is that, of course, if the source current changes, then the output uh, voltage is going to change. The output common mode voltage is going to change. So the bias point changes. Okay, in general, RS is large, so, and we're going to try and design it to be large, of course. So, typically this is a negligible effect, but it does uh, have some impact, and so we need to be aware of that. Now, in the next set of notes, we're going to look at finding the gain for this differential circuit.